Peaky Blinders is the critically acclaimed show from the BBC set in Birmingham during the beginning of the 20th century, where a gang from small heath in flat caps stuffed with razor blades look to take control of the criminal enterprises across the nation, and eventually the world. When writer Stephen Knight was creating Peaky Blinders, he wanted to mythologise the characters of his world, borrowing more from the western and gangster genres rather than the typical period productions that the UK is used to. Knight has said that he wanted to make the series one where the characters were larger than life, who were bold, brash, and had unrivaled swagger. Today we're going to be looking at how Knight is able to effectively and efficiently introduce us to his characters, using either action, fraction, or a herald. Entertain the Elk did a great video about this on how Spielberg introduces his characters, which I'll be expanding upon today. But if you want to see the source of some of these ideas we'll be discussing, head on over there and then come back. For those of you who stay, here are my versions of the definition of action, fraction, and herald. Action. Action is based on the tried and tested adage of a visual medium such as film and TV, which is show, don't tell. When introducing characters, have them doing something which is inherent and unique to their character. There is also that we are fundamentally drawn to characters who are active and dynamic, as they will be engaging and entertaining to watch. Fraction. Fraction is where parts of a character are revealed to us in smaller pieces. They become a puzzle for us to complete rather than shown to us all at once. What is particularly bold is if a writer is able to give us the important parts of a character as motif, attaching emotional weight to fragments of them, or foreshadowing elements of them which will be important later on. Herald Finally, the Herald is a bold and interesting technique that Knight uses frequently within the pilot of Peaky Blinders, and can be a powerful tool that you can steal for your own writing. It is where another character heralds the arrival of a character you are introducing. Within the pilot of Peaky Blinders, we see this happen within scenes, and even as a segue between scenes. So, let's look specifically at the various character introductions that Knight juggles within the pilot of Peaky Blinders, and why they are so effective. Firstly, let's examine the introduction of Grace, the supposed ingenue of the pilot episode. Grace is introduced to us in an active and interesting way through the actions that she takes. She wanders down the street towards the garrison pub, standing out in an emerald green outfit against the greys and blacks around her, a literal jewel seemingly sparkling against the surrounding darkness. However, we soon learn that she isn't the innocent girl fresh off the boat that we are first led to believe she is. Straight away when applying for the job as the barmaid in the garrison, the roughest pub in Small Heath, she mucks in with the cleaning by emptying some horrific looking liquid from the spittoons, all while singing a skill that will come in handy in the new precinct that she finds herself in. Now, let's look at Aunt Polly, the matriarch of the family that the series revolves around. When we first meet Polly, we see the revolver that she points in John's direction. A fraction of her. Upon first viewing, it leaves us uncertain of who this person is and her intentions towards the young blinder at the business end of the weapon. She is then fully revealed in a dress which seems to bleed into the gun in her hand, almost as if it is an extension of her. She then slaps some sense into him while dishing out a word or two of advice, establishing her as the one who is ultimately to be respected in this man's world. Chief Inspector Campbell is the antagonist of the first series, being the foil to Tommy's plans for the blinders and their expansion. Here we are introduced to Sam Neill's character firstly through a herald. A herald is someone who typically announces important people into parties, detailing their various accolades and titles. Knight uses this in a clever way to have us understand a little more about Campbell. As Tommy leaves his brother Arthur in the bookies that they run, Arthur calls after him. I'm calling a family council tonight at 8 o'clock. I want all of us there. You hear me? There's trouble coming. A steam train then races across the screen carrying a man who we are not immediately introduced to, but are aware that he is going to be a threat to our protagonists as he fastidiously looks through their files in his carriage. This technique is used again as Campbell is shown through the streets of Birmingham when he first arrives in the city. In front of his car, a preacher announces, The Lord will smite the unholy when the great judgment comes. And judgment is coming, my friends. Judgment is coming to this wicked city. And your wickedness and your fornication will be revealed. You cannot hide from the Creator. You cannot hide from the Almighty Himself. The Creator sees all. You cannot hide from the true and living God. 
It is clear that we are meant to associate his exaltations with Campbell, who is a righteous man who has come to England in the belief that he is there to clean the city up of the degradation that he sees in its dark corners. A man whose ideology will automatically place him in conflict with Tommy and the rest of the blinders. However, it is the main protagonist of the piece that Knight gives the greatest introductory sequence to, using all three of the techniques on offer to him in order to make Thomas Shelby the larger-than-life character who can be the lead of a show like this. Initially, Tommy is heralded onto the screen by the discussion that a Chinese family have about a mysterious man who has evidently asked for one of them. It is clear that they are scared of this person, or at least worried about the potential of disappointing him. We are then initially offered fractions of a man riding upon a majestic black horse through the slums of Birmingham. We see him merely as stolen glances to begin with, often from what might appear to be hiding spots, glancing up at him which gives him power and authority. This fear is further reinforced by the actions of those who are in the street now scattering away from him as he approaches. Now in the middle of the street, the Chinese family from earlier approach him in both awe and deference. He then has the girl who can read fortunes perform a magic spell on the horse, which is supposed to give it good luck in the next race that it will run in. This is however all a show that Tommy is making to try and assist in getting more of the slum residents to put down bets with his family business. A cunning action that shows that Tommy knows the business that he is in like the back of his hand, but also understands the people of Birmingham and the precinct that he moves within. However, this is also an interesting choice that Knight makes as his opening sequence for the pilot, as it sets the tone for the remainder of the series, effectively mixing various distinctive tropes from a variety of genres and heightening the reality to a mythological state. He is making us aware that this is going to be anything but a typical British costume drama, and Tommy is going to be nothing like the leading man we expect to see in such narratives. So. What can we learn from the way that Stephen Knight introduces his characters to us in Peaky Blinders? Firstly, you can effectively mix up the various techniques in order to find engaging ways to make sure that your characters are active as they arrive into a scene, show us key fractions of their personality, or are heralded on by other characters. Secondly, make sure that your key players within a piece get the grandest of introductions, using all three techniques outlined here if you can. Finally, when creating your characters, remember to make them larger than life, and no matter how you introduce us to them, we will be compelled to watch them as we can't tear ourselves away.